common types of charitable remainder trusts. There's really two types that we work with a lot. One is a charitable remainder annuity trust, where this provides a fixed amount of income per year back to the family, even if the amount actually exceeds what has been earned by uh, the, the charitable trust on the investment. Uh, so again, this will not hedge against inflation, you know, because you do have that fixed term, but it could chew up the principal somewhat as years go by if their earnings on the principal don't match the actual fixed amount of income that you want per year. So you'll notice the last bullet on the left side there basically states that at the end of the term, you must have at least 10% of the initial trust corpus remaining in order to close out the trust term and of course be legal. Now a charitable remainder unit trust is a little bit of the opposite of the annuity trust in that it provides the family a fixed percentage of the assets as income per year. So therefore the um, charitable remainder unit trust hedges against inflation uh, in the sense that every year you do have to recalculate or re um, you know, value the property to determine what your percentage is gonna be. So valuation of property like real estate that's just sitting in the trust producing maybe rental income, uh, what have you, eh, that could be a little cumbersome to do every single year, which is why we recommend that if you're gonna put real estate into the trust that we actually sell the real estate within the trust and therefore you invest the sales proceeds which gives you a nice you know, brokerage account to work off of in terms of reevaluating the actual value of the trust itself every year. You'll have a nice statement that tells you and it's very simple uh, going forward in that regard. And one thing I haven't mentioned, I don't think, if you put real estate inside that charitable trust and then you sell it, guess what? You have no capital gains as a result of its sale. So for example, I have a lot of clients who own a home in the Los Angeles area well, if you own a home in the Los Angeles area and you've owned it since maybe the 1960s, you probably bought it around $30,000, you know, but now it's worth $3 million. To sell it, you would have a huge capital gains tax hit. So one of the planning strategies would be to donate that home into this charitable type trust, sell that property within the charitable trust, no capital gain, and now you invest 100% of the sales proceeds for the remainder of the trust. Now again, you must leave at least 10% of the initial trust corpus in the trust at the end of the term in order for it to be legal and pass you know, all the scrutiny of the IRS, et cetera. Now, um, one of the problems with the charitable remainder trust, if you think about it, is that charitable corpus is ultimately going to end up going to the charity. It does not come back to the family. Yes, the family gets income off of it throughout the term, but they do not get the trust corpus returned to them like in the charitable lead trust they do. So how would you want to replace the wealth? that you are now giving to charity for your family. Well, one of the ways is to take that income stream that you're getting every year off of the charitable remainder trust and invest in it into a life insurance type policy, uh, which will of course have a death benefit. And then that death benefit just so happens to equal the amount or close thereto of what you've donated into the charitable remainder trust that ultimately is gonna to go to the charity. So what you've done by taking that income stream and investing in a life insurance policy, you're in a sense replacing the wealth. And so this is a typical t planning uh, tool. Uh, it's used quite a bit with our families that can get involved in these charitable remainder tri type trust. And the beauty of it is not only is charity, charity excuse me, you know, uh, benefiting, but so is the family. The family gets a return of that uh, donation through the life insurance policy. 